So this, um, I was not, this isn't intended to be like a talk or presentation. Um, this is more meant to be like a collaborative kind of discussion. Um, so how many of you here are familiar with the like, Node.js community? Okay, so kind of. There, there's a few people who are kind of, a few people who aren't. Um, so the Node.js community committee is a top level committee in the Node project. Um, it is one of two top level committees. So there's the technical steering committee and the uh, Node.js community committee. Uh, the community committee is tasked with, the way I phrase it, is outward facing kind of efforts. Um, so helping kind of the community interface with the project uh, and then kind of helping uh, engage with the ecosystem at large in certain ways that the uh, technical uh, technically focused project parts of the project are not, uh, or it's not part of their scope to do. Um, there's more to that, more to it in that we've had some scope scope creep and things, uh, other interesting things have popped up, um, and so that's uh, rethinking kind of certain elements of that and, and making sure that we're being working most optimally, um, including uh, working with the technical side of the project and uh, basically optimizing what we're doing to ensure that we're getting the most out of the work that the community committee is doing is kind of what I wanted this session to be. Um, so for a little bit of context, I hope I, I was chairperson or co-chair and then chairperson of the ComCom for a year. Um, I helped a lot with the ComCom. Um, I spent a lot of time in it um, and it's something I really care about and I want to make sure that we're able to kind of uh, get a lot of value out of the work that's been done and that could be continued to be done um, from the kind of same point of view or same, same intent. Uh, so I do want to start this off by just saying um, there we have we have a lot of really awesome contributors. It's really been nice to see the community really grow. Um, there's initiatives at this point that have grown beyond the community community scope. So like there are members of those initiatives who do not necessarily understand like know the community committee and, and like don't participate in it at the level. And that was my goal for a long time. Um, is like it does the community committee needs to be administrative uh, and it administrates the kind of efforts that work under it. Um, as they need it, basically, and I'll just allow get out of the way and allow them to do it. For me. So, um, the community committee has a, a few different initiatives. Uh, well, kind of a lot of initiatives. Uh, so these are current initiative, current initiatives: internationalization, mentorship, Node.js collection outreach, user feedback, and what's their reason. Um, so these are, you know, we have a champion structure where someone from the community committee has to be a champion of an initiative for it to be a current initiative. Um, and then from there, that person can kind of report up to the ComCom uh, to allow us to kind of understand what's happening in those initiatives and make sure we have a line to them. So they're not just kind of floating doing their own thing without help uh, from if help and support. Um, these are our initiatives that we've either marked at in, as in need of champion or they are kind of stale in some way. For example, I'll put the blame on myself. Office hours is something that was discussed um, and I just hadn't had the time to kind of really go and do it more um, despite having been the champion for it and having others offer to help. Um, <laughs> there's a bunch of other things. So code and learn is a really interesting thing. Uh, specific code and learn friendliness so making other repos other than node friendly to code and learn. I believe this one is actually referring to com -com uh, the ComCom subjects, like the ComCom uh, initiatives, making them friendly to code and learn. So basically allowing people to come and contribute uh, and get a commitment in a repo and node. Um, additionally, you know, there's others there. We've had others proposed. Those haven't always manifested into this list. Um, and this list and kind of getting to the point where we have a list and we have this structure of champions took us a long time. We did a lot of work um, and, uh, you know, we, we, we got a lot, did a lot of work to get to this point. Um, and the, you know, I want to see if we can kind of explore what we can do next uh, from these initiatives and also uh, other things around them. Jory, did you have a question? Yeah, I just, I want to just get some clarity around yeah. like whether you, what, what you want to talk about yep. is like the extent to which some of this is like, New, like office hours, for example, yep. is something that should be for all of the OpenJS Foundation yep. versus like, oh, this is something we 
want to keep running within Node's autonomous community because that's super important that Node still has its own community identity. Yeah, I mean, I think part of this, the, this list is outdated. Yes, um, it's very So part of this really is like backlog and want to have instead of in need of a champion mm -hmm. and like a project that was already like individual membership shouldn't be on this list. Um, that's something that's already been determined to be moved up to yeah. the CPC and the, the full uh, foundation level. Um, and some of these were like never flushed out projects that like need new champions. It's like mm -hmm. a wish list of like, yep. if you're interested in this, here's some context. Yep. So we probably need to restructure this. I think it'd be helpful to like structure this conversation around what does it make sense for the node? Like if, if node is a community committee, like wants to have things that remain, like what do the scope of these look like versus at the CPC level? Because I do think a lot of these things, um, not just initiatives, but like looking at the various repos, because we have like education, we have evangelism, we yeah. have all of these other repos that aren't, uh, that get started. Yeah. Um, um, these areas, yeah, help um, these areas that are really important I mean, it's historical to know that, again, like, it makes more sense to provide a framework at the CPC level and then um, help empower other per other projects to work together on, like, best practices on the things that they want to have it unique to their project. Mm -hmm. um, I know. Yeah. But I agree. It's just the question, I guess, is, like, the people who are contributing to the node one, do you, do you want to just stay at the node level and, or are they interested in the bigger picture, like here's a template versus the actual, like let's do the right thing for the node. Right, and I, I think part of the structure that Tracy just mentioned could be like this group that's under the OpenJS Foundation. Um, and by the way, just because I'm standing up here, I'm not trying to like lead it. I'm just trying to, I'm going to participate. But it's yeah. Happening. yeah. Uh, so I, I, I think the structure that Tracy was mentioning is like that bringing something like, I mean, outreach is a good example to me. Uh, I don't think that's a node specific thing in any way. And I think that should be a, a broader thing that our foundation does, but um, something like, you know, office hour, or like for example, office hours. Um, if we wanted to bring that up a level uh, and define a, like have some kind of structure that uh, projects, if they want to, can go pull from and use that structure uh, to base their own work off of that, um, whether they just want to carbon copy it and, and start it off or if they want to actually go ahead and uh, base it off of that and then kind of deviate um, and then you know it'd be awesome to get that feedback back up of why they deviated. I um, think as Mike was also saying though is like people don't have an obligation to yes. work on things. Right, that's the... Yeah you can just keep working on Node, you can yeah. just keep working on Mobi, you can right. just keep working on your project right. if you would like to pull this information yes. in. Um, I would say like if you want to just keep working on what you're working on already like for instance these folks at Node um, then like maybe the opportunity there is for them to teach somebody else who is excited to do it at the CPC yeah. level about like what they had been working on and how they approached it. Yeah, and, and what I was getting at there is like, uh, just, just because we move something up doesn't mean we're not going to continue doing it or we don't, we're going to stop doing it in Node. Like we can continue doing it in Node how we want, um, but Node has prior art and prior context of how we can up level that and then uh, help, help, we can continue doing it our way and also help other build out the framework for others to do it as well. The, 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 actually, the words you just used is what's in my mind. Like when you said, move it up. Mm -hmm. That implies yeah, moving it up or copying. Well, yeah, and yes. that makes, you know that can actually make total sense in some sense. Yeah. But another one is like, no, this actually just keeps building. Right. To a new, you start a new initiative, which is like broader. Yeah. Do we and need to draw a Venn diagram of like yeah. what makes sense at like? Do you want to do it, Tracy? You know, like, yeah. I'm, not I'm just wondering. It's not a Venn diagram, man, because it's, it's like, a hierarchy. So there's there's a few yeah. different there's a few different ways that any initiative could change. One is it's completely absorbed by OpenJS, like individual membership. Yep. Like no, it should not be administrating anything but individual membership. Yeah. Uh, at any level, uh, there's stuff like office hours, which it would be good to have guidance from OpenJS to spread learning around the projects. But honestly, you're administering it yourself. You need a bit of help from foundation folks if you need it. Uh, and then there's other stuff that is solidly in the realm of, of node work, which is like website redesign. Like we get to decide what our look and feel looks like in the structure of our documentation. Maybe we use some foundation resources for hosting if we get the structure figured out. But so even that example I was having a discussion with Chris Heller and for them, he was saying it'd be really great if the foundation or the team provided like here's our template. So if you're a new mm -hmm. project, you want a nice 
website, you can customize these 10 things and not be a happy website. Okay, so for project. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
a marketing, like a, a blog, you know, feature or like story set for any of the projects that want it. Um, but like that's not already in place. So work still has to be done at the foundation level to actually, because like some of these things, it's just like, it's, it's almost copy and paste. Like individual yeah. membership is like already there. But then these other things like node collection, which I think are, would be really helpful to the other projects. Like how, how would we move forward with that? Would we like make a repo at the OpenJS yeah. level? And like, but it's not gonna be, you don't wanna make it look like it's a program that exists yeah. Yeah. because we're yeah. creating a bunch of work where we're potentially of, yeah. not adopting it. It's a question it. of who does the work. I do want to interject here and pause. Four of us have been talking a lot. Um, That's why I was going for a second. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anyone else have thoughts or context or something, that, you know, feelings about this stuff um, that hasn't been talking much? I have, I have an area of conversation that I'd like to ask Comic Con people about, which is in the, um, the OpenJS Foundation. Provide support for code of conduct escalation and, and um, that kind of thing. Um, we want to still empower communities to like manage their own process, but it's like, what um, what's that like line? What should that like line be? Which yeah, I think that's what I kept asking about. Like, the, should we define this spectrum? Like, how many buckets are there that you can classify in program? Because there's it's there's all the work does all the work does uh, some of the work or most of the work, but you can go and get involved if you want. The foundation does little of the work, only if you need it. Otherwise, you're doing all the work. Or like foundation has zero involvement. Like everything will be somewhere on that line. Each program is going to be different. So like for um, moderation, like foundation will probably provide guidelines for everyone. Moderation team is like, do it. There's a process you need to follow. And here's the escalation path. There's what level of OpenJS. That doesn't work for Node, though, because we already have one that's very effective. No, so I say it doesn't work. I think we could augment it if we need an escalation model. Or like if yeah, we don't have an escalation yeah, model. Yeah, no, I, I, like, I wasn't, like talking, about, I wasn't talking about an escalation model. I was talking about the, we have a moderation team that is so engaged. What's written, what's written there is like, to know from the community. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or also guidance to other projects that are looking to put a moderation team yeah. in yeah. place. So, you know. but that's one example where a lot of the onus for day-to-day -day work is on projects, and the foundation just provides a little extra layer of, of service if you need. Yeah, might not work for the project. They would want foundation to provide all the guidance. So we need to like uh, communicate with all the projects and get the feedback first on how, what, what kind of project, what type of work should be meant by the foundation, and then what. what and what that would presumably happen during the proposal phase. The other thing yeah. I got is I think it's really, really going to be constrained by people who show up because we're yeah. not going to have the foundation with unlimited like paid resources and unlimited time. So not like we can just say, oh, this is all be by the foundation. Well, we hear lot. from like the pro the JSF projects. Like that's what I'm. <laughs> this is like so. My question for you is like just thinking about moderation in this example. Do you all have like a system of moderation in place for your project? Okay. Would is that something that would be a burden to if we if like if it was decided like we've already we already have a set like a an agreed upon code of conduct across the projects. But if we were to come, like at some point, CPC says, okay, well, like part of a code of conduct is the ability to enforce it. Um, can you, do you feel comfortable being able to enforce the code of conduct on your own 
or would you ask for like outside help to learn how to do that or would you need people from outside of your project to help you on that yeah. you'd be okay yeah because like my thing is from wearing my moderation team hat <laughs> we actually think it's really important that you have the context and trust in your project when you're doing the moderation work if but people don't know who you are it's not cool. Context, you have um, quite a bit of background in the involvement of the Commission around me. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a conduct kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You kind of have this like, of this cannot be a sort of be a normal thing. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah, because I do wonder if, like, I don't know if I feel comfortable yeah. with, like, us something, saying something like, we provide a moderation team to the end of the project. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really tough thing to do, but also otherwise you're potentially leaving a gap for if there's not space. I mean, this is just like an interesting thing with like impact projects versus other level projects. Like, how do we cut the gaps between the two? So, is it like, is a good idea with these to be sort of, I'm even thinking of like next steps with like uh, considering how they go to the OpenJS level, like. Do we also, it's like a list of these things that have happened with our project that we would recommend being useful or something exciting that other projects could do, but then for it to be worked on instead of creating a giant backlog of things that aren't getting worked on, would we want to like have people vote on what they're actually interested in seeing move forward right now, like proposal? I would say like it would be interesting to have like the PPC like groups and anybody who participates and yeah. It's wide open for anyone. It would be interesting to have the CP say, C say, this quarter, this you know half of the year, we want to focus on these like three initiatives and hitting you know like and, and just kind of taking a more like focused approach by you know you know time. Yeah. What I don't think you can do is like a vote is great information. My concern is that that doesn't work. Well, right, you would want to assign it. So it's not only like a vote as in like, I like this thing, popularity contest, it's who's signing up, right? Yeah, that's, that's part of like the factor. Yeah. Like, like if, if, the, if, say we have 50 people, that's going to be lovely, who are regularly participating in the right. CPC, and they say, you know, we all kind of agree that we care about moving mentorship, like, you know, code of conduct support, and like, <coughs> travel funds. Stuff, like the, like the, those efforts uh, on a like macro level forward for the next six months, and that's where we spend our time. And then, and we have because we have people who are interested in carrying those. Yeah. Buckets, you know, so, and, and just, hold on. Uh, sorry, Aaron, you, you bring that point. Um, I just wanted to, to like lend my support to Tracy saying that having external moderators, people who are external to a community, go in and be moderators. Not a great way to build trust, but having experienced moderators from other communities to show up as facilitators to help them with the process, and who don't make decisions that are like, "Hey, here's how the process should work," and you left out this chunk of it, would be a nice support thing if it's possible to offer. You know, in labor union negotiations, they have outside facilitators who come in. This was actually, I think it's an open issue for us with moderation of the idea of having the, the neutral facilitator, like someone who can step in when, especially when two collaborators who work closely and say like, I have absolutely no horse in this, you know, race, but uh, let's I like, talk. I feel like we've done that in practice. So it's like when someone is involved that ends up happening, but it's not like a documented or uh, like written down thing. How much of this is presuming that the organization is about in practice the, the absolute total number of such issues in past history is I'm gonna guess negligible in mm -hmm. terms of, of needing so you yeah, I think I understand what you're saying, like how like how big a problem like it's like say um ninety nine percent of the time this is an issue. So, the one percent of the time is when you end up on hacker being support. Like that's, that's, yeah. Yeah. It, it's important to have those. It's 
structures. Yes. Oh, but my question is, is it one percent of the income, or is it zero point zero 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 one? Yeah. I mean, for Node, we've had many. It's uh, not in the last year or two. Like this, no. it's uh, you're right. Though. Yes. Like overall, yes, it feels, we think we have a lot of fires. We do not have that many fires. They just feel very big when they happen. I would say Small maybe it used to be once a quarter. And, now it's yeah. like once a year. They yeah. feel and they feel smaller when you have the processes. Yes. yes. Yeah. So my so point that might also be why here is that to Jack think to some extent. Yeah. yeah. The experience of no yeah. all to other contracts, which is notorious for being yeah. yeah and scope of yeah. these are quite different. Yeah. yeah. And and I and I you know I guess the thing I would I would like to say about that is that I don't think we're trying to like. We're we're coming this from the node context, like this is the node Hong Kong. Um, we're trying to discuss how we can up level things and like provide that framework, but like not force it. And I think that's a discussion we haven't like uh, whether it's like a requirement or not, which I don't think it should be like a hard force requirement. Um, having the framework available is nice to have an option uh, at that point. Like have having that knowledge. Uh, distilled in a way that you can consume it and just kind of take it and implement it. Mm -hmm. And once it gets, once it gets handled. This is with the OpenJS frustration that exists, but there is a subsequent of the people who are involved close to the OpenJS who are not involved with Node, so may in fact be able to fulfill this sort of role for Node. Thank you. 
but it's a good model that like you could throw a document up there and make some copies of it yourself. Yeah, and there's shared services like the foundation has helped the user keep track of who they did. So yeah. Mm -hmm. And so doing surveys are about the other projects. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's already to some circumstances. I do this as like a guild almost. Like if user feedback would be great, it would be like, okay, I'm in, you know, Webpack. I think it's really interesting what survey you did here. Like, what did you do, and how did you reach people to like get there? And I would love to like do a similar feedback um, in our project, right? So, Ahmad, you're a member of user feedback. So you're not just involved in Hong Kong. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Around like. Uh, this being a more general generalist approach. Yeah, so I'm, I'm like two layers deep. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're a layer under user feedback. Yeah. Um, I just like a layer, layer of questions of like how does this, or actually more, more, more different, different articulation. How does any work that happens on any layer, whether it be about bubble backup, and then across the rest of the groups and communities, right? Like, so in my particular example, and working with the enterprise feedback context, we're facilitating a conversation with businesses who are large enough with a large uh, footprint of known application development. And we're the whole the whole focus to get context in and then distribute that context. Yeah. But we already kind of hit that, oh okay, so I have all this information now. Um, so it's more to me about how do you bubble back up and then across? Um, or maybe you don't need to bubble up, maybe you can just go across. More about facilitating that kind of cross functional communication for my developers. But uh, yeah, like that's just knowing right. that though, I would like, I would love to see like a report come out because I'm sure, like, in that circumstance, the board, the corporate members would love to hear that information mm -hmm. and being able to facilitate, yeah, moving that up. I mean, that's something like as, a, as an individual work you could still do without like some overhead of the CPU. Um. You, for somebody without the context on it, give an example of what some of those learnings or like context would be that would be useful to be bubbled up and then and how that would have been. Yeah, the... so we just had our first official one a few weeks ago. Um, we're trying to better frame the questions and frame the kind of questions we get back. Uh, but specifically, to give you an example uh, of we get suge suggestions from those, those user communities of things that the project can do. So one of the good suggestions that came out was an uh, actual calendar feed for uh, releases and applications, like an actual like now format, because members can import that into their project management tools and have some planned work going on. Right? So that was a good, you know, simple suggestion. But then, okay, how do we go about doing that, or how do we communicate that to, let's say, the uh, TSC or members, or, or you know, now in the OpenJS context to other kind of projects as well. Of actually having some centralized effort of creating that calendar feed, right? Even something as slow hanging fruit as that becomes a complicated issue of, okay, who's going to do that? And how do we communicate the progress on that? Because if we keep having these conversations with the you know, enterprise groups and not communicate progress back, then they're just going to lose interest. Yeah, and so let's talk because we were talking about redoing the new page. And, and, so be, and, to be, and to be clear, the mandate of the team that you're with is just to. Capture those, have a process to capture and identify those things, and then bring them back up and, and yes. let somebody else figure out how to operationalize it. And equally, whatever opportunities that they come want from these conversations or from other committees as well, if they, let's say the, um, a, a, a working group is looking at promises or some core API or something, and they need to facilitate feedback or get some information beyond just the, hey, Twitter, what do y'all think? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Getting actual businesses who are multi million dollar. Um, projects dependent on that API that's going to get deprecated, maybe facilitating that channel and maybe getting, you know, the pipe, 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 pipe chain of, hey, business X, when you're running a thousand applications in this node, version or this data product or transfer project, take this beta or alpha or RC release and run it and tell us some lessons or learnings from that. Um, but that's a bit of a pipeline dream. But in order to get there, we need all these kind of channels of communications. You know, up and vertical. And I, I, I very much agree with that. I, I think that's one of the things I personally noticed about Comcom um, is like we, how we structured Comcom and TSC, it, there is definitely like a line in the sand. Um, and there's not a lot of cross communication, which is really sad for me. Um, and that's, that was one of the motivations for the session was discussing that. So, I think that's 
So I would say with this, just in this for these examples, um, what would be really cool that I would like to see from the CPC level is identifying these like these maps, these yep. ways of being able to mobilize and activate on the information that you collected. Because of course, like you've done this awesome work, it's a ton of work for just feedback. And then you don't want it falling on deaf ears. I think um, your awesome presentation yesterday on um, node help and the all of the recommendations that you had, our recommendation was you should just file these as issues. Like it would be really one of the ways um, is to like find people who would like or the repos who would find this problem relevant and then um, you know it's up to them right or for someone to show up and say oh cool this issue I can totally tackle this issue um, this is really important for us to be able to do or um, that's good to know but it's it's deprioritized for now for the other issues that we have in repo because um, the hope is that your work doesn't fall on deaf ears but um, it is also who shows up. Um, but yeah, and I think in that circumstance too, a best practices that we could do with user feedback like open to S level is how do we work on opening the channels to like corporate members being able to get this information from a newsletter perspective. I think they, they would be really interested in that. What? I think people could get it as well. It's like the, the companies that are in the foundation are invested in JavaScript somehow. Yeah. Theoretically. No, it's opening a line of communication. Yeah, Just yeah. in general, yeah. like opening a line of communication. I think would be a really um, interesting and fun challenge. Um, those are the sorts of things where, like, on the joint strategy subcommittee we were on the node, which was bringing top level committees and the board together in the same meeting and, like, actually workshopping and doing things it was really good because somebody there from Google would be able to say, uh, Yeah, I've got two colleagues who would be very interested in this. Let me make an introduction. Um, so, we need to keep that stuff off again as well because this is exactly a circumstance where us working together is going to help a lot. I'm just really quick because you mentioned like the joint strategy yeah. with the committee, and I'm, you know, I'm not super uh, like clear on like how, how that. But I feel like like joint strategy is is now something, for example, that should be strategy across all of the mm -hmm. projects. Mm -hmm. just, yeah. yeah, it's not happening anymore. It, it yeah. stopped when the merger happened. So in this circumstance, what I would imagine the joint strategy would be, and the entire reason it existed was a board meeting. Um, is not the place generally where things get done. Decisions are voted on and the information is already been presented ahead of time. But that doesn't mean that the board members aren't interested. Some of the board members are absolutely interested in doing the work and helping facilitate the information getting back to the board, getting back to corporate members. Um, so what we would do is have a subset of them, a minimum requirement of uh, three board members that were not community board members attending the meeting alongside people from the project, and in this case, it'd be projects. Um, so we would maybe want to say for a minimum forum, like a certain number of projects need to be represented in the meeting, or decisions can be made. You can have discussions, but you want to make sure you have the perspectives in the room to be able to go forward with things that require all of the, the wheels to be greased and working together to make something happen. Um, and this is the sort of thing I think that would be really helpful is like, you know, this is what we thing. Corporate members are very interested in getting this kind of information. Um, they would certainly be incentivized to help. Um, but we haven't, yeah, we haven't canceled that back off yet. We were waiting for, um, I had canceled the meeting. I was, uh, I co chaired it with Sarah Vodney, um, who was since left, and was, um, we were waiting for the CPC to be formed so that um, the CPC could sort of take, take control and figure out what they wanted to do moving forward. I would recommend, I highly recommend it because there's few other opportunities you get engaged board members on a monthly basis like working with you on things or running meetings. Very good. Not the community board members, but uh, no. <laughs> yeah, y'all were the, the ones to get. <laughs> At this point, it should be a subset of the community. Well, yeah. CPC is expected to be the public. Right, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I would, the, the entire community. I think it's like before it was a little unclear who was part of the you know, it needs to be followed by, like, yeah. 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 I will say it was not broadcast for a reason. So the circumstance there was that the board members could still talk candidly about yeah. things that were semi private. It was recommended, you know, anytime it was something that could be public information that would be shared back, anyways, and published as issues or whatever. 
because um, it's important that we're transparent in that work. But it was nice for the board members to be able to trust us that something with boards and open source foundations. There are there are there are often concerns that they can't speak about things for fear of it coming back to bite them from like being put in their heads from the project side or something that they shouldn't have said. Um, uh, in terms of uh, being public and putting ourselves in there. So we 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 ten minutes left. Did some of that. I want to go back. I think Jerry was pointing out like concreteness. Yeah. yeah. I think that I like that. So I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you want that? To get that whole list of things. Like all these things really are things that you're building that map for. Right. Yeah. And yeah. in my mind, if somebody steps up, they become one of the active strategic initiatives. And, yeah. And we can work together to kind of say we'd like to say find volunteers for these three, which we think will be the most important. Right. But it relies on us finding the champion. Right. I think it's just like it's sort of the pattern which kind of work like that. You have a strategic initiative list that's only on there if you have some champion and then you have a name on the Yeah. That's kind of a starting way of having to focus on here's what we're focusing on. Right. Because I and I I think one of the values of like this kind of event is getting everybody together, you will generate like a hundred thousand ideas. Yeah. We should capture all of those. And the ones that really excite us and ignite us right. are the ones that are gonna hopefully make it to like our like staging process where we're actually putting energy and momentum behind a few specific um and the efforts that, that we, we think we can get done between now and the next event. Yeah. Yeah. To make sure that the, the list that we generated from the last interaction, which all during the brainstorming session, is just not the same meeting as yeah. what we guys have done. We surface now that there's. I said one thing. Um, uh, basically, you know, most of the people in here are, are, are Tom Tom, you know, JS people who have experience and are really close with, you know, what they've done in the past. And, and I was going to say, maybe if you guys are trying to figure out how to up level the things. That the Hong Kong does, and what should and should not apply to them specifically. The more within your, your responsibilities, you can maybe think of it as like, um, what responsibilities of the Hong Kong within Node.js? You know, put yourselves in the shoes of an OpenJS set project, essentially, and say, you know, with your Node knowledge, what responsibilities of the Hong Kong would you love to see be made redundant if the OpenJS set foundation is functioning at its highest level at some point in the future? Like, what things are y'all already doing? that um, could be offloaded and be productive for Node itself, maybe not Node itself, but any project if it was offloaded to a higher level of responsibility. Like, not, that, not that someone else comes up with your code of conduct, but has some guidance and some help with some resources to make that process for y'all a little bit easier and to be able to run that part of the committee with fewer people. Yes. Because a lot of the projects have very few people to, to do all this stuff with. I mean, so good. Exercise that that's something that could probably yeah. be hashed out online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think a good exercise that we can take back to Hong Kong yeah. and like either do it as a as a group, just do one initiative per meeting, or to have the initiatives do it themselves um, is come up with that document, like write a rough draft. Of, uh, if we were to write this as a proposal, as you can see, what would it look like? Rough outline. And then, well, you know, ask that question of every initiative we have. If there were any backlog. Yeah, but if if it's just about the guy providing a guidance from, uh, from uh, like a top level, then I think even uh, website redesign or more just collection would be uh, a guideline for the projects how we manage or what's our process look like, how we did it like website design. If it's a big initiative, it's maybe some sorry. other pro project want to uh, go through the same process of. But yeah, there was a lot of work done, but which can be used by other projects. And same goes for not just collection, it, it, uh, yeah, not, not in this current position, position but uh, someone may want to over top on the process. So they don't, uh, yeah, I think thinking about it like that, there's, you'll be able to see from your experience with your own with Node.js what what initiatives should be wholly owned by the, the you know, and, and pretty hands off, um, wholly owned by the, the individual projects. Um, is there some things that obviously you know the project need and want to, in order to feel safe and, and 
adjusted or whatever, they need to hold on to some things. But then other things of like, man, I wish we knew this before we got started. And then, you know, those kinds of things you could capture and move up and then offer them to other projects as like, if y'all want to do this, here's the learning that we crystallized from it, from our messy process. Do we have, maybe this is just my disability, do we have like a champion we get together of some sort? Or we don't. Some that's, cadence? So that's actually something we, we talked about a little bit of governance. Um, the, the champions for initiatives have to be a yeah, compound member. So basically every compound. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's for the compound. Yeah, yeah. We, have, we have talked about the, a while back about um, that's why we cut how, our initiatives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 having, having a, a the <laughs> we we, uh, we talked briefly uh, in a meeting about how requiring initiative champions to be members of Hong Kong has really increased the flexibility of the community. Um, so if if we were to open that up, which I think we should reach well, again. Door, 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 yeah. Yeah. To, to, to that point, just for everyone's education, in the new CPC process, you do not have to be a voting yes, right. member of the CPC. In order to be a, a mentor or a champion, sorry, you can anybody can champion an effort if they're like, I'm going to do this. This is, and come to meetings about it. This is something I, sorry, this is something I wanted to bring up since we started putting on this path. I wanted to wait for everything to finalize, but I think this is a very good path for Tom It makes more sense rather than limiting the scope. And we've tried this previously with, um, there's a word survey that I can't remember, uh, people who. Um, server. Servers, thank you. Um, but that didn't really work well. Um, it was, there's a lot of process. I think it would be smart of Play Hong Kong to follow a similar pattern of what we built out with the CPC of voting members and regular members. So, the reason, just for yeah. context, why this exists in the first place is because people were creating projects without asking and didn't attend meetings or ask permission for things when it affected other parts of the project yeah. and didn't ask for context. And so we thought what was end up happening was if you didn't have a champion on the Hong Kong, you were setting yourself up to fail yeah. because you weren't going to have the help and assistance necessary to be able to get your project going. That's or sort of something like the champion meeting. Right. That's exactly what we're exactly. saying. You just need accountability. Yeah. You don't need to be a voting. Right. Exactly. Inviting them, like, yeah. well, just because so I, I would say that you should have external champions, you should just invite them to every yeah. meeting. I'm going to be technically open, so yeah. they can show up. And yeah, so, so, they're, so they're there for the, the each initiative to be able to do that. And then it's, it's because you don't want to have a separate meeting if you only have the yeah. champions that maybe you don't have the, the members of the You want to support it. And I, I, I do think there's two things here. Um, one is Voting membership for the membership, and the other is championship. Uh, and I, I think they go hand in hand, but I, I do think that uh, regular membership, uh, voting membership is something that would be interesting. It's also a way for us right now. So we did, we did change our level up in the compound process previously. We'd be in the for three months, you're in. Uh, no questions asked, basically, unless there's like an objection in your proposal. Um, or no, sorry, we voted on people once they hit that point. Uh, and, you know, no problem if it's more than 60% or something. Uh, they got in. Now it's there's some magical path between um, initiatives and compound. Uh, it's not very well defined, from what I understand. Um, and I think with regular membership is interesting. What's the point of regular membership? I'm still not understanding yeah. this. Like, it's, it's, it's a, a contributor, contributor, isn't it? It's, 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 yes. The difference between an observer and a regular member is like, in my mind, the regular member says, I want to be a regular contributor to this group. We don't have, we don't have observers either. Yeah, we don't. We, That's we, what I'm saying. Like, I don't understand what the difference is between, mm -hmm. like, a, so if you have voting members and like regular members, what's the difference between a regular member and a, 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 a um, contributor? So I, 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 I'm not exactly <laughs> sure. Um, you mean like yes. the species yeah. 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 yeah, we don't have a contributor like, distinction. Yeah. But but I, I think one of the, the arguments for having a classification of regular member as opposed to somebody who's just like an observer is a sort of way to recognize people for mm -hmm. making sustained effort yeah. and attention. Yeah. 
independence and contribution, even though they may not be a representative from a specific project. So it was sort of a like it, it's a way for a person to derive recognition and like value, you know, like an acceptance for their like, work without um, having to be voted in. Because otherwise, I don't think it's going to be In terms of the voting, we basically said it was going to be just one vote. And we don't, yeah, we want to encourage yeah. other people to be regular contributors. Yeah. And there was a, there was a discussion about it. People just didn't work on it. In my mind, anyway, being recognized and sort of moved from that commitment, but there's some value there. I mean, I, I will also say the uh, barrier to observership was high uh, it, because of our admin process and how it, like, actually becoming a list observer, it was relatively difficult. Uh, yeah, it doesn't make sense. Right. But, like, I, I'm giving, bringing you the context of why that was maybe a challenge and maybe didn't work out as we hoped it. Also, the Right, like, well, the, is that two regular members can become voting members. And you know, you, and, and probably yes. nominated by, I forget the exact word, but it's like, yes, you can join as a regular member and become a voting member. Like, what you can do is like, well, actually, the specific set of words here don't apply to voting members. Nominated voters are supposed to be regular members. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I wrote the word. Some of the regular members, like, we got these regular members, they show up all the time. I, I entirely yeah, believe yeah, that yeah. that is exactly but the dynamic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But the then, you know, it's not a bug. It's, just, it's a feature. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, that's another way I think. Thank you, everyone.